This video will be discussing the life cycles of angiosperms and gymnosperms. To start out, we'll discuss the characteristics of seed plant evolution. Evolution of seed plants is a result of the development of protective seeds and the continuing decrease in the size of gametophytes, which if you'll remember from our other videos, gametophytes are going to be where gametes are ultimately formed. All plants undergo alternation of generations, and this is going to be true for seed plants as well. And alternation of generations, if you'll recall, are the alternation between haploid and diploid life cycles, life stages, I'm sorry, um, detailed in the figure on the right if you need a little bit of a refresher. Feel free to pause the video at any time. The reduced gametophyte in seed plants is better protected from the environment, in this case UV radiation, due to the larger sporophyte. This helps prevent dehydration and UV damage of the gametic genome. Seeds allow plants to be dormant, meaning they only grow when the conditions are correct to foster development. And this and other structural features allow for the transport of seeds to better growing environments. Now for some basics. Seed plants are larger, more complex plants displaying sporophyte dominant cycles using sporophytes, which is the dominant stage of the seed plant's life cycle, which in the case of the seed plant is going to be enlarged and the structure that we associate with that seed plant, and gametophytes, which is the haploid stage of the seed plant's life. And the male gametophyte is the sperm containing pollen grain, and the female is the egg containing archegonia. Seeds are a plant's embryo and its food supply, or the cotyledon, stored within a waxy coating. Seed plants are going to be heterosporous, meaning that they produce multiple types of spores, one developing into a male gametophyte and one developing into a female gametophyte. So those that develop into female gametophytes are called megaspores, and those that develop into male gametophytes are called microspores. And there's two big types of seed plants, gymnosperms, which are conifers, which are known to have naked seeds, not housed in a fruit and angiosperms, which have seeds that are housed within fruits and are frequently also referred to as flowering plants. So now to jump into the life cycle of a gymnosperm. So in gymnosperms, the sporophyte has both ovulate cones and pollen cones. Ovulate cones contain ovules housing megasporocytes, which produce megaspores through meiosis. Pollen cones contain microsporangium, which produce pollen grains through meiosis, and each pollen grain contains a haploid tube cell, which brings the haploid generative cell to the archegonium for fertilization. Upon fertilization inside of the archegonium, egg and sperm join to make a diploid embryo inside of the diploid seed coat alongside haploid food reserves. Over time, the seed coat hardens, and that will then allow that seed to stay dormant. Following germination, where the sporophyte breaks out of the seed coat, the sporophyte grows into what we know as the mature plant and the life cycle continues. Next, we'll go into the life cycle of an angiosperm, part one. At the base of the carpal, which you can note in the figure on the left, is the ovary, which contains the ovules with diploid megasporangium. These sporangium produce megaspores through meiosis, surrounded almost entirely by integuments, which is just a coating. These megaspores contain the female gametophyte, which divides mitotically to form the polar nuclei and the egg. On the anther is microsporangium, which produce pollen grains, or microspores, with the male gametophyte inside. The male gametophyte divides to, perform, to form a generative cell which contains the nucleus which will fertilize the egg and the tube cell which will create a tube that reaches down into the archegonium to transport the sperm nucleus to the egg. Angiosperms undergo double fertilization. So the pollen grain will enter the stigma and the tube cell extends down the style to form a pollen tube leading to the ovule. And while inside the pollen tube, the generative cell divides mitotically to form two sperm nuclei. Once those nuclei reach the ovule, one sperm nucleus fertilizes the haploid egg, creating the diploid zygote, and the other fertilizes the polar nuclei, forming the triploid endosperm. 
The diploid seed coat then hardens and the triploid endosperm serves as the food source for the embryo while the seed is dormant. Following germination, where the seed coat cracks to expose the sporophyte, the sporophyte then can grow up and mature into a flowering plant where the life cycle then repeats. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.